In this example, we're going to compare four different accounts. So say we have $7,000 to invest for five years, and all four accounts earn the same interest rate, 4%. What we want to see is how much each account will have at the end of those five years, depending on how often the interest is compounded. So first, we'll calculate what the account will hold if the interest is only compounded annually, then if it's compounded monthly, and then daily, and finally continuously. And what we'll find is that the more often interest is compounded, the higher the final balance will be. So for the first three, we'll use the compound interest formula, F equals P times one plus R over N to the NT, the same one we've used several times now. For the last one though, it's a different formula, it's the continuous compound interest formula, F equals P E to the RT. For all of them, P, R, and T are all gonna be the same. We have the same amount of money, the same amount of time, and the same interest rate. All that changes for the first three is what N is in the first formula. And then for part D, of course, we'll use the other formula. That'll be the difference. So for part A, we'll calculate F equals the $7,000 times in parentheses, one plus the 4% divided by N, which is just one, raised to the power of one times five. One being N, five being T. And we find that that first account, if the interest is compounded annually, at the end of five years, the account will hold $8,516.57. For part B, we do the same exact calculation all that changes is what n equals. So I do 7,000 times again 1 plus 0 0.04, this time divided by 12 because it's compounded monthly, so n is 12, raised to the power 12, again n, times 5t. And we find that the second account, if it interest is compounded monthly, the final balance will be $8,546.98. So we observe the trend that we expected. The more often interest is compounded, the higher the balance will be at the end. One more, part C, using the same formula. Again, F equals P times one plus R divided by N now is 365 it's compounded daily, close the parentheses, raised to the power of n times t. If interest is compounded daily, we find that the account holds $8,549.73. Finally, for part d, we switch over to the other formula, and we calculate f equals p e to the rt. So 7,000 p times e to the R, 0 0.04, times T, 5. And we find that that last account holds $8,549.82 at the end of the five years. So again, we observe what we expected, that the more often interest is compounded, the higher the final balance will be. The most dramatic effect is when we increase from annually to monthly compounding. Monthly to daily increases by a little bit, and then the difference between compounding daily and compounding continuously is not all that dramatic. It's only about nine cents on this $8,000 balance. But that is much more than the account would earn if it's only compounded annually.